Hey Legionnaires and welcome back with some more NTW3 action for you today and we are on the field of Borodino as the Russians are facing off against the French in a classic I just paused there and waited for the guns, the guns to stop firing but there you go yeah we have some six pounders here firing but yes this is a classic match off between the French and the Russians here on Borodino on this uh, battlefield that actually is like kind of a, uh, a really nice scenario that is being uh, created here by uh, some of my subs as actually there's a lot of infantry that's died back here, I did not realize this. Like, that's a lot of dead Russians. Um, but yeah, we have, uh, like, the Russians defending all of these, like, major points here around Borodino. Uh, around, oh, we actually have a cavalry fight going on. We have some uh, lancers, some Polish lancers here going in. And they've just routed, like, two Russian light cav here. Uh, I mean, they're bringing up more chasseurs, don't think there's any need. Damage is done. Uh, there is more cavalry back here, there's the Dragoons, and there's some Ullens over there. I apologize for keeping this map up because I was uh, in the middle of uh, just explaining. But yeah, so they are kind of like, there's a Russian army, I think, defending around Borodino from what I've heard. There's one around uh, 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 Tietze down here, and I think there's like the other two, uh, like between Borodino and this uh, Smejonski, and then like the other one's like here. I'm not sure exactly, I can't... I, th I think that is technically the case. There may be another one somewhere else, I may be getting that wrong. Um, but yes, basically the uh, the organizer of the scenario like wanted the Russians to kind of like dig in in like certain areas instead of like in often in like Borodino they often like get um, like outflanked and stuff and the French have kind of got to almost do like a frontal assault they have like it's going to be a big grindy match by the sounds of it massive artillery piece uh, like gun over here look at this got a uh, like I don't even know what this is I don't know it's disappeared now big like six guns there. So, I mean, that's going to be fun for uh, whoever's in front of here. So, we, yeah, the cause that we have here today, I should say, we have Udenor, we have uh, Davu, we have uh, Victor, and we have Ney all the way over there around Borodino itself. Um, and then, I think, for the Russians, we have, obviously, uh, Bagration, we have uh, Dutorov, we have uh, Tomasov, and we have someone else over here, I think. Who else do we have? I actually can't remember. Um... Someone else. Another one probably beginning with all or ending in of. Oh, there we go. Uh, that two chop. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, it is slowly getting underway. Actually, I think that there is a little bit of line fighting going on over here. Yeah, we have a little bit of line fighting going on on this side. It looks like Ney's getting involved. He's, Ney's got like a interesting core of like uh, French and German forces. I don't know if he's just this is like yeah. He's got the Vestenberg over here. So yeah, they're just uh, chilling. Not even gonna bother firing. Yeah, interesting to see how good they do, like in comparison. We actually, yeah, there's actually a lot of uh, uh, German troops here. I quite like this though. That, like most of the cores have like a mix of like French and something else. So I think like Udenon's got like a lot of French, uh, Swiss, Portuguese, like that sort of like combination. I think uh, with Davu here. I think Davu's probably like, the most French. Like I think I don't think he's got like any like. Um, Anything from any other core, really, but I mean, here, yeah, he's got like the, the classic French look. I mean, look, look at these grenadiers, they look awesome, they really do look glorious. I mean, yeah, the food core's now getting like hammered by uh, <laughs> by artillery right now. Yeah, I think he's got an entirely, entirely uh, French core, it's kind of amazing. And then I know over here that uh, Victor has a uh, like a bit of a Polish, he has a bit of. A German as well, and obviously French. I've seen, yeah, some, there's some Polish infantry here. Actually, quite a lot of Polish infantry. And this is, uh, I don't even know what this unit is. It's a guard unit, though, for someone. It's definitely German of some sort, with that name. And they've got some Saxons here. They become very influential in, uh, in another big battle some uh, at some point in history known as Leipzig. Yeah, they are starting to just like, they're having a few, uh, few shots over here. We've got the, uh, the light infantry opening up. I mean, it's going to be a pretty tough building to take. I don't know if this building actually, yeah, they could put units into this building could Russia. I don't know why they haven't. They make it a lot harder. We've got some grenadiers that could stick in there. Since, uh, like, most of these, like, NTW3 replays, people love to stick grenadiers in buildings. That's a perfect building to stick a grenadier in. There we go, the musket fire underway. But if you're enjoying seeing NTW3 anyway on the channel, I'd like to see some more glorious musket fires, some more uh, grindy battles like this one, then do, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe when you're on here, and don't forget to leave a comment as well to show your support. Yeah, it looks like Brigation's over here, he's going to defend this right flank. 
Um, yeah, almost almost over here in the middle. Yeah, these, look at these, like, these guns. Another six pounder here. We've got a lot of like, a lot of guns in this position. Six pounder here. I mean, I like this one because it's like actually on like the where the redoubt is. I really like this. Uh, so the French are going to assault this, like one of the redoubts. I don't know where the other one's supposed to be. Maybe a little bit further back. I honestly can't tell. Um, and yeah, then we've got Dutrov here. He's, his core's yet to appear. We have actually a core here appearing. I think this might be um, Dutrov's. It looks like he's uh, abandoning the forest and he's going to be retreating. I thought they were supposed to hold their ground, but maybe not. Maybe he's like... I mean, he has actually got... There is a sizable amount of troops defending this village here. So, uh... But I would have probably kept my entire force together because otherwise, like, Victor can just go on and take, like, the village with his entire force and then he can, like, deal with that because he'll overwhelm that nice and quickly. And then he can come and deal with the rest of the core here. But it looks like maybe they, uh, maybe there's a gap in the line maybe along here. I can't obviously see all the Russian forces, but maybe there's a gap in the line. Um, because, uh, right now, Davu is just, uh, pushing it right up and he's just gonna be able to, like, take the center of the field. Looks like he's coming across and he's going to try and help like push back Tuchov's uh, like force. Who knows? Let's go back over to Naze, where Naze, like, the action's going on here. We've got cavalry going in now. Got uh, Dragoons going in for the Russians against uh, Chevrolet Galancers. Yeah, it's got big Dragoon units, actually. And Karassi is here. Oh, yeah, the French have lost this fight. Look how much, like, cavalry's coming in. They're, like, being drawn away. This cavalry just needs to hold its ground. I don't know why they retreat. There's so much cavalry coming in now for the Russians. Got like these uh, hussars here. Yep, yeah, this dragoon's like held its ground finally. We've got like cuirassiers here. Loads of them. Oh my gosh, 146 men. Yep, yeah, they've just routed all of the French cavalry on this flank. And then that leaves leaves Nate with like one tiny little chasseur, and that's it. So you can be in trouble when it comes to uh, that. And these guns are getting pretty beaten up, and that's very close to where the cavalry is. You need to be careful of that. Another big six pounder like Barry there. I say big. It's only three guns, but that's one more than what the French have. Interesting to see how well the Russians can hold. I mean, like, maybe they'll do quite well since, like, most of these cores are made up of, um, like, a mix of, uh, of French and actually, like, and they're, like, vassals, uh, infantry. And here we go. Here is where, like, well, I think this is, who is this? Uh, Dutrov's uh, core is. Yeah, literally, look at this. There's a solid line of Russians the entire way down here, as they thought there was. Um, yes, yeah, so they have, like, an army each side of this, uh, this building here. And cavalry going off, I can hear it. Yeah, okay, with the French are sending in carry, they're going after this huge gun emplacement. Not a bad idea. Oh, it's a howitzer as well. Oh my gosh! That poor cavalry. Yeah, that's a howitzer. I didn't even realize. I think it is. Yeah, it looks like a howitzer. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Whatever it is, they, they, they held. Put it like that. And they're going after this gun up here on the redoubt. But they're going to have to get through infantry first by the looks of it. Which could have formed square. I don't know why it didn't. They got lot more cavalry. Uh, they got more infantry in behind, just ready to shoot the cavalry. But the uh, artillery crew has routed here. They may return. This infantry broke as well. So I mean, that's a nice little charge there by Udenor, getting a like nice charge off there. Not so sure about this one over here that we did. Just charge straight into the. Ha I don't know what it is. Is how it's or is it like siege artillery or something? I don't know. Don't know what this gun is. If someone knows in the comments. Let me know. My Russian isn't fine, like that great. <laughs> it's basically non-existent. Line infantry here they're holding. I mean, you can see here though, that it's a huge, like the French have a lot of like infantry spare here. That they're gonna be able to just flank around. So the Russians need to make a stand somewhere. Um, maybe like around this building here. Might need to make a stand. I'm surprised the Russians didn't bring the guard. I'm surprised that neither side brought their guards. I guess neither one wanted to play like a really small army. Can I have any uh, musket fire from the light infantry? I don't know. Maybe not. There we go. All far enough now. Yeah, the Russians are getting pretty beaten up here. This unit's on 62 men. I mean, it wasn't actually a large unit to start with. Only 78 men in the unit. That was a sapper anyway. Looks like they sort of recovered over here, but I mean, obviously if another uh, carry charge comes in, there's some nasty stuff out there. There's some Karassias out there. Um, like, they could do some nasty work. 
But the French over here seem like they're struggling to get through uh, the uh, defensive of Borodino. The Russians playing a pretty stern defense. I mean, they are taking a lot of casualties, though. A lot more than the French are. I mean, this dude's pretty banged up. I think obviously the, uh, the Russians now need to take advantage of their cavalry advantage. Like, they need to, like, send these huge Karasio units. Uh, there's another one. I don't know where that one's gone. Um, but uh, they need to get them involved, and they need to like start to uh, influence this fight. I mean, obviously, a lot of these teams put here can form square, and that's really annoying. Yeah, these the impetus are a good unit. Grenadiers. Yeah, I think actually most of the French units can form square, which is really annoying. But it's whether you attack like the units uh, that are like engaged with your infantry. Like, yeah, you can see they're already forming square. They are already prepared for it. But look at that. It looks really weird. They're like backing on into each of the square. Ooh. But yeah, and then we've got like a cavalry here, we've got some uh, just like German cavalry holding on. So yeah, a lot going on there. Over on this side, looks like we're also about to get a big land battle about to happen. Yeah, this, like I said, Victor's bringing like most of his army over here to deal with this tiny little like force of the Russians that's been left to defend this village. It's got a poor like six pounder here as well that's gonna do its bit. I don't envy these Russians, put it like that. Do not envy these Russians. But yeah, this replay was sent to me by a, uh, well, yeah, by a sub on my Discord. So if you'd like to join uh, my Discord and you haven't already, uh, then the link is down below in the description. And you uh, are more than welcome to come and join. Send in your own replays, join some battles, whether it's NCW3 or something else. Or just want to get involved in a nice, and uh, like, Total War community. I like these, um, is this a Saxon unit? This is grenade. That's a German grenadier. This is a Saxon unit here, though. Which I know Saxons are also Germans, but there. This is a German unit from Berg, which I'm just calling them Germans. They're getting called Saxons. Yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to see. Oh, they have actually got stuff in this building. I think they put grenadiers into this building um, when I like, saw them moving around. So at least there's some grenadiers in this building. But I'll be hard to take. There we go, the line battle over here has begun. Sir, our general is under attack. They get their first volleys off to the uh, Russians, but it doesn't really matter because the Russian, like, I'm pretty sure Russian accuracy in comparisons like the French accuracy is just non-comparable. Um, the Russians kind of have to rely on numbers and also melee, I think. Russian melee is just incredibly good. So, I mean, really, the French just want to stay out of melee range. Stay like this all range, they'll be fine. Fight for the Tsar, men! You will be proud! Oh, that's a beautiful boy, beautiful. The Tsar will be proud. But what's going on in it everywhere else then? Looks like this carry over here is under, under fire for some reason. Um, maybe the artillery? I guess it's being shot from artillery. I'm not really sure. Yeah, there's the other Karasia unit I was talking about. Um, the center, yeah, center is like very much like there's a lot going on. There is a lot going on everywhere. I'm gonna miss some stuff. I do apologize. But there is like line battles everywhere. There's a huge line battle that basically has been created by the, uh, by like this, the guys that made the scenario. Basically telling the Russians to hold in certain places it makes a huge line battle. Silence before the, uh, before the chaos over here, really. Like, everyone's just like reloading. There we go. Oh, more Dragoons over there. Dragoons and those Karasis look very similar. Like, their headgear looks so similar for the Russians. Like, if you see them in the distance, like, is that Karasis? Is that Dragoons? You'd be glad to know this is Dragoons over here, friends. I mean, you need to be careful, though. They've got this little line infantry unit coming around here to the French. They could flank, start to flank the uh, Russians here. Russians look like they're taking a lot more casualties looking at, like, the amount that have fallen. You can see all the bodies, like, in front of that. Yeah, like... Look at that. It's quite a lot. French taking a fair few themselves, though. I mean, this unit can form square, so I bet they're just trying to bait the cavalry in, and then they're going to form square. There's also light infantry, so you can probably start to shoot these guys. The Russians are uh, moving forward. Their own dragoons. Looks like they're going to, like, yeah, just go behind, like, their own lines. It's a bit dangerous. They start to get shot, shot at by the French. And by the Russians, in fact. Uh, yeah, why didn't why didn't you just like go through and like a bit more in column or something like that? But they're coming out to challenge the Karasias over here, the uh, Russian dragoons. Russian dragoons are pretty nasty though. And here we go, they're gonna go in. They're going in after the infantry, in fact. 
Oh, after the crashes, and they're gonna get into this one. Oh yeah, this one can't form square here. This uh, light infantry. Uh, neither can that one on the edge there, that line infantry. So there's actually quite a lot of infantry here that is very susceptible to being uh, taken out. You need to be careful with the Russians so they don't just fire into their own cavalry. They'll go into this one next. And then there's uh, Lancers here. They've just angered a whole host of cavalry, I think, for the uh, French. There you go. Dragoons going in. They got a nice little charge off there with the uh, Lancers. And here come the Karassiers, 120 of them. That could be, uh, that could be the killing blow. Yeah, I mean, those actually, those lances broke. But the Dragoons are, yeah, not looking so hot. They're trying to get them out of there, I think. And now they're going into combat. Look at this, the Russians going into melee. This is not what the French wanted. Not what the French wanted. This is light infantry as well, so I can't imagine this can do well against the uh, light infantry. Oh my gosh, that was loud. It's all going off now. Uh, Russians breaking here, the Dragoons. Honestly, if you can hold with this one Dragoon unit and hold all of this all this cavalry in place, this is a lot, and this is actually infantry as well. Let's just let your infantry like go ham. They're actually is a 2v1 now. I'm not so sure if they will. I'm not sure if they'll win that. Uh, the uh, cavalry's broken, so the uh, the line infantry here, they need to just put some rounds into this cavalry. And form square themselves. Grass is getting out of there. Yeah, it looks like Russia's gonna lose this fight. I'm kinda surprised. Russia I mean it's a 2v1, I guess, but yeah, you broke. Wow. Kind of surprised after that, all me saying that the Russians like want to get into melee. Maybe they don't. What do the Russians have? They've got some like, I don't know, is this like, just like National Guard or something to them? Like militia? Got a lot of that here, over the guns. Look at this! Look at like the chaos. Already there's a doubt it looks awesome. Like all the bodies strewn in like the abandoned cannons. It's awesome. I hear the blooming howards are going off. That's going to be a constant noise all day, I already know. Good if they had some cavalry here. The, um, the Russians, because it's like a big gap in line here. Baltic Airs, there's some artillery that's definitely going to take. Actually, what they do? Why are you not committing this? They have like dragoons here. They have um, some like uh, Tata like Ullans, which look very like Polish, and dragoons here as well. They could just go straight through this gap here. There's literally no French cavalry here. We can see everything that the French have. We can't see everything the Russians have. Remind you that. So we know that the French have nothing here. I mean, I guess the, the Russians don't. They've got like still got cavalry in behind as well. Russians are holding quite nicely in Borodino, I'm gonna say. They're doing quite a good job. There's still some, like more reserves coming up. A lot of these grenadiers as well. Yeah, a lot of these are grenadiers. Jeez. Well, that's uh that's a good that's a good sign. I mean, they're actually making a little offensive here with their uh line with their light infantry. It's like that's the thing though, like it's whether you attack um like with the cavalry, like do you like attack this unit and like just hope that they don't form square because they're fighting your line infantry? I mean look at this line. I mean I could go anywhere on the battlefield right now and there's gonna be a mighty line battle going on. How is like this little enclave doing over here? Oh the French are very much in the village. They are not in a good spot. Yeah, they've been outgunned. Uh quite quite badly. Oh actually I say that. They've just kind of like out been outmaneuvered and they've really maneuvered a bit. They're gonna get flanked here in a moment by uh, some Polish infantry. These guys don't look very uh, elite, I'm going to say. Are they just about to go through a building? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I like that. They're all stuck on the building. They got the attack order to go through the, like, to, like, go through the streets, and they just went into the building instead. Well, they should win this, I think, the Poles, because, um, like, this Russian unit has been shot up by, like, head-on, and it's getting now charged in the flank. Win that. There, there, there is uh, grenadiers in there supporting. They're already like losing. Yeah, there they go. They're going in the combat. Smart move. Now, would these guys dare, like, would the Saxons dare shoot on them? Uh, yes. Yes is the answer. Maybe the Poles will look. I think the Poles are going to lose that now. Now that the Russians went into combat. And the French have cavalry here, which is the only issue with the, uh, with the Russians as well. There you go. Going into combat. Ah, see, this is, I feel like, what the Russians won. The Russians would quite happily fight, like, the Saxons and the Poles in combat. The French would seem like a different, like,. Yeah, look at that. They just broke that Saxon unit instantly. And also, like, the Grenadiers here just firing on them. So that's a nice little win there going on for the uh, for the Russians. Might be able to hold this village a bit longer than I expected. Victor's going to have a little a bit of a tough time. This has all got artillery here. It's like gunning down these like poor Russians in the flank. Got a rough time here. A lot of cavalry setting up over here as well. And the Russians have uh, taken this village. The, uh, no, sorry, the French have taken this village. 
Um, the Russians have been forced back, as you can see. So the line is already crumbling, which is a worrying sign. Uh, I don't know where they've now got to defend. I don't know if there's like a full back place, so they might just be falling back on this redoubt and make an angle here. I don't know. But uh, the redoubt is now coming under heavy fire as well from a lot of line infantry here from the French. And the Swiss. Can't forget the Swiss. Renowned for being pacifists. They're now at war. Only play. Oh, we have carry going in here. Oh no, this is not carry. This is infantry. Infantry going in. This is a lot of grenadiers. This is all those grenadiers I saw coming up here. They're now being thrown in. They can't form square, so I guess be aggressive with them. And uh, yeah, I mean, the French are actually holding. The French are holding against these grenadiers. I don't know how great they are. Uh, he could bring a lot of them, so it makes me think they, they aren't that great. There's another one here. They are not doing so great. It's a worrying sign of it. I mean, they broke one line infantry, but. Not, not a lot. Where's that cura Curacio unit gone as well? They're just still in the back. I think that's in the back line somewhere, somewhere we can't see now. Concern. There is also, I just want to say. Oh, there's a massive, like, look at this. Cavalry. This is where all the cavalry is. Yeah, the cavalry has actually gone in. I just saw this, uh, like, Hussar unit here. Could just go for this gun. There is a gun that's just ready to be taken out. Uh, here. I mean, yeah, this cavalry all just charged in, and most of these units can form square. Um, so they, they're unfortunate that all the Swiss can form square. Of course the Swiss can form square. Um, yeah, and it actually looks like the Russian uh, grenadiers here have been routed. Uh, and there you go, a general has been killed. Who got killed? Uh, Tomasov is dead. Tomasov has died on the battlefield. So that is not good for his core. His core is now leaderless. And they're holding the redoubt here. They're holding the I forgot what it's called, but there's a couple of different ones. I won't know which one this one is. But they're holding the line. Well, they're trying to anyway. And we've got like all the Russian cab now over here. And it's going to go storming in. It's going to try and take out this line infantry. This line infantry, I don't know why it's not formed square. The guns are just for the taking. And this is a like, yeah, this is a, nut. This is a six pounder. Oh, there's some friendly fire about to happen. No. I was going to say, this is, well, that's a gun gone. That's an eight pounder gone. Actually, no, it's not. How they broke that all in, I have no idea. Um, but there you go. Is this about... Yeah, we're about to see all the Russian cab, aren't we, die? Oh, no. Please don't happen. Please, please. Oh, they, well, this gun did route. And there you go, look at that. This <laughs> All this cavalry that was back here, that looked like it's going to be very annoying. It's just routed. That's annoying. I mean, there's this one dragoon left, but it's not going to be able to take on all these hussars and this cuirassia. They might be able to if they had all stayed intact. You see the French now pushing on hard here. And we got some uh, chasseurs in the back. What are they doing? Oh, they have to this gun. I didn't even realize this gun was still here. It's like this weird gun. I don't know what it is. Six guns just gone like that in a snap. Don't know why they didn't try and get that out. I guess maybe it wasn't that important. They still managed to hold this for doubt. I mean, it was a good job here. Um, they... Oh, there we go. Cavalry in the back. The cuirasses have finally reappeared. And then now into the back of these units here. This is a line for units in trouble. Right with that one, they might get a couple more, you know. Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna get this one as well, the 72nd E. They might get this uh, Bedenberg one here as well. Yeah, they're gonna get a couple. This is a really nice win here for the Russians. And uh, they're trying to form square in some areas, but they're not gonna be able to do it everywhere. Oh, there was a unit somewhere that I was, um, I saw this, a really cool unit. So, yeah, here it is. I actually just found it, Udenot. I love this unit, it's like the, uh, uh, assault column. It's awesome. It really does. I know we're not looking at the Karasias, but this is a very cool unit. There you go. It's like a, like a huge... It's like 235 men. It's like They look like grenadiers as well. So it's a big grenadier unit, I think. Yeah, these Karasias actually did a lot of damage. And they could just take out this uh, assault column now. i go for that. Like, this unit can't form square. Go take that out. And then, I don't know. I think most of the rest of his army can form square. Like, this is Ney and Udenot over here. Nay's pretty banged up. Nay's pretty much gone, actually. It's looking pretty rough. Uh, allies took a building. They took the town hall. Oh, they've taken this building. Oh, yeah. They, I haven't been over in a little while. So, yeah, they've taken everything here now, I think. The Russians have uh, been cleaned out. It's just gone the in. Of fatigue, sir, and must rest away. Yeah, the Russians have been forced out of the village entirely. There's like some grenadiers left, and that's it. So, they've lost Utitsa. They've lost uh, this village. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. Uh, it's... There you go. Not even going to try and say it. So there's only Borodino left that is holding. 
Um, obviously, they are in the field in a lot of areas. This cavalry here, the chasseurs, has helped route a, like the whole center of like the Russian line here. So the Russians got nothing in this gap here, so I can imagine we do not need to rush forward and take it. Split the armies in two. Cause some havoc. Are those Karasis still alive? Yes, they are. Did they take out the? They did take out the uh, assault column as well. Excellent. Russians, yes, yeah, still holding strong here. They did a really good defensive on this side. And they've got a lot of buildings that they can hide in. I think they can... I don't know if they can... I don't think they can hide in this big church. They can hide in this building here, I think. It's a shame. I want them to hide in the big church. Yeah, more curiosity here. They've got... This is where most of the cavalry is. It's going to be able to combat the French cavalry. Like... The uh, French have, like, that big curiosity unit uh, further down, like, battle line. Over here, they've got two of the Russians. Here they're going to go in again. Look at this. This unit's off form square. And it's... I don't think it's going to in time. Yeah, this, Um... Line infantry here, not form square. They're gonna get out though, the crash is straight away. They don't like that this uh, unit in behind is form square. Oh no, they did, they did form square, okay. Didn't look like it at all. I'd maybe go for the general, go for Ney. Go for Ney, maybe going for a flank here. Uh, I know that most of these units can't, oh yeah, all of these can't form square here. Oh, but they gotta run the gauntlet of so many squares of their own to try, I don't know, I, I'd leave the carry, I'd keep it alive. For, uh, for like when you've got to face the French cavalry because um, that's the concern I have. Over here, you can see the Russians actually making an offensive now and the French are retreating. It's a concern. They actually have got a little bit of like, dragoons here as well. Okay, so the, like the Russians aren't quite out with cavalry yet. Big line battle looks like it's now going on over here though. Look at this. Look, look at this confrontation getting ready. It's huge. The Russians are getting, like the French are getting really close. Well, which I mean, that helps the Russians. That helps the Russians. Their accuracy is not great, but obviously, I'm sure the French are now going to be like just putting withering fire onto this uh, Russian line. But now they're exploding. They've got really good accuracy, the French, compared to the Russians. Or well, most of their units do. Look at this gun right here. This is a six pounder. It's like, this needs to be on canister. Oh, there's cavalry coming in. I would have thought there would have been. Yeah, there's so many guns here for the taking as well. Quickly, can they get it ready? Can they get the gun ready? Come on, come on. Fire. Fire, you fool. No. Look at that. They're going to get this gun. There's so many guns here as well. They had not a single piece of cavalry to defend it. They even had chasseurs in behind. That's such a shame. So many guns wiped out. Yeah, see, they're trying to turn like an infantry unit, turn around, fire on the on the uh, on the calves. Just no no point. Should have like a unit that can form square to defend it. Maybe these sappers. Like these sappers, I don't know what they're doing. There's units back here that have been firing, by the way. They, yeah, these guys are firing back here. They're shooting their own men in the back. That's just painful to see. Like your micro in like probably may thing has to, like doesn't have to be that great. It actually still has to be really good. Like, you need to be able to like make. Keep an eye on which units are in the front line, which units aren't. Gun here firing. Oh, here we go, more carry. Here comes the Crassiers. These guys can't form square. Either. Seems like very few of the Russians can form square. Their light infantry can. Seems like that's what's their elite. Their light infantry, I guess, is just like the average guy that just. Oh my gosh, yeah, look at this. This entire Russian flank's been broken by like a couple of hussars. Jeez. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. It's going to be interesting for sure. I mean, if the Russians can beat what's left of Ney's Corps and not take too many casualties, they have a chance. But I don't know. They're running out of a lot of their assets, like cavalry, grenadiers, over on this side. I don't know how many they've really got left, if any. Yeah, they got big. They got some big units, though. Some big, healthy line infantry still. They got um yeah they got some stuff here. They got like, one grenadier left. It's one of those like pretty awful grenadiers though. So. They might want to start thinking about getting this army back in these guns. Certainly get these guns out here. Get them back to Borodino. They got some grasses. They need to get them their cab ready to face like all the cab over here because uh, the French still have quite a lot. Yeah, this is a concern. And even when the, yeah, I'm gonna say the French have got this. Like, I forgot even about like Vic's army. Vic's army's yet like still like miles away. It's like not even like bothered to move 
since Utica, and you've still got more cav here. Yeah, the French have just, like, overwhelmed the Russians. I do feel sorry. The Russians, every time we play Borodino, I swear, always seem to lose. So annoying. I'd like the Russians, I'd like the Russians to win it once. Just once. There we go, look at this. Going in, the crash is going in for the, uh, I don't know what they're going for, cannon or the square? Well, going for the square is not healthy for you crashes, uh, but the cannon, it could go quite well there, you could do quite well there. You're going to have to get through the square, the square is actually quite nice in position, it kind of makes it kind of awkward to take out this gun. Yeah, put some rounds into this uh, crash unit. Oh yeah, they're, they're firing, they're firing canister, they're firing canister, they should be as well, This look how close this gun is. They're not even firing back at the infantry. They're just going to be happily being shot. What, what these guys are firing at, I'm not sure either. They're overlapping as well, so they're killing their own men. But they're, they're overlapping. We've got the Russians now going in. They're doing the Russian thing. They're going in like for a kamikaze charge. And they broke instantly. I don't know if they should have done that. These guys could have formed square. They could have helped protect those guns a little longer. Okay, here we go. We've got the French crashes up against the Russians. Uh, this could be actually kind of battle deciding. I think the French probably still have the edge anyway with like all their infantry. But I mean, taking out these Karasias, you could then control the, uh, the cavalry fight. Like, that's, this is the last heavy cav available. I know the Russians have one more, but like... I don't know where it is. I think the Russians are going to win the cav fight. Look at all this... Like, they're getting infantry in there, the uh, Russians. It's helping change this battle. Yeah, the French Karasias broke. They may return at 55, I'm Our not sure. Um, we've got these Hussars still here. I don't know if they're going to hold. Yeah, where's the other Krasio? Oh, it's a long way away. It's getting shot by squares, so it's a, a bit busy right now. Yeah, get it. Just come on. Don't get this close to a square. Get out of here. Like, they should just accept they're not needed. The cavalry is just not needed here. The Russians are going to win this fight. Again, over at Borodino. So they've done a really good job there. They need the cavalry, like, over here to help protect their, like, breaking lines. Like, nothing left here. Um, yeah, there you go. They broke all that cav. Nicely done there, Russia. So, uh, all of a sudden, like, in, uh, one turn, of, like, one small engagement, they've, like, turned, turned on a head who has the cavalry domination. I think these are the last two cavalry units that the, uh, French have. Got some, uh, like, German dragoons here and some... Ooh, these are German hussars as well. So there you go, not much in the way of cavalry left. Got these uh, howitzers still here, they move them up. Yep, the limit of the howitzers and the remains of the, uh, like, of uh, Udenor's course coming forward. It's some grenadiers here. Got some, uh, line some light infantry and some line infantry. Why you kept the them back, I don't know. The grenadiers, I understand. Swiss still battling hard here though, look at this, down to 40 men, I mean it wasn't a big unit anyway I guess, but, so confusing seeing red coats here, you always just think it's the British, the British are here, but they're not, oh okay, so they've pushed back the uh, the Swiss here somehow with one unit of line infantry, there you go, it's a small miracle, another big gun emplacement here to be fair, oh, this is a, yeah this is a huge gun emplacement, this must be like siege artillery. Look at the size of this thing. What is this gun? How long have you been here? Oh my gosh. Like, look at the size of the barrel. That thing must have done a lot of damage. No wonder Nays lost this side. It's got, like, it's got huge, like, rail guns firing at him. They don't want this overlapping here, though, the Russians. Come on. Just stretch this unit out. You can then, like, flank out the, like, the French a bit. Oh, they can take the offensive here. They could be aggressive. They could just flank on hard with their uh, extra infantry. Yeah, it really does look like Borodino is the last stand here, which is uh, very apt for the Russians. Um, they've got like a few line infantry here falling back. They've got the Karasias still. Not much, though. They've got a fair amount to defend, but like, this gun might want to think about turning around. This gun may definitely want to stretch out, turn around, and just shoot at everything over here instead of like... I don't know, the small amount that's there. Like, I mean, it's not even got a clear line of sight. There's all these buildings in the way. I'm not really sure what they're a a hoping to hit. Yes, it does look like the Russians are going to lose this one. But it's been a fun one to watch, for sure. I mean, it's been nice to see just like a massive 
line battle from like Utica all the way up to Borodino. Um, yeah, I just, the French just like got so much quality. I feel like if the French brought their guard and then the Russians didn't bring theirs and they had like what they have here, that might have been better. I don't know. Obviously the French uh, like Imperial Guard's really, really good. Um, but maybe, maybe that would have been better if the numbers certainly would have been better because like the Imperial Guard it cannot bring a lot from what I'm aware. Certainly not a core. If I'm right, I may be wrong. I'm pretty sure their cores cannot bring like a large Imperial uh, Guard. French opening up it again. I actually really like this Grenadier of the Line. Grenadier of the Line is a really good looking unit. Opinion. It really is nice. I don't know why. They've just been allowed to shoot those um, cuirassiers, which is kind of just blasting me. How these guys, like, they want to keep these units alive. These like, cuirassiers are going to be key to your survival. This desperate survival. Yeah, look at this. The Russians being aggressive. This is what they need to do. I mean, the French have been very good countered. Really, now you need to push this line infantry forward when you push this one forward. Like, you push this one as well to, like, still 2v1 them. So that's what the Russians really need to do. They need to 2v1 the French. And they're doing quite well here. But the French, as you can see, are bringing in some units over some Swiss over to come and try and influence this fight now. Let's just get the Grenadier unit. Yeah, it's not doing so well. You're not good at shooting. You're not good at fighting. What are you good at, Grenadiers? Why are you technically a Grenadier unit? You can't do either. They're getting gunned down now as well. Get out of here. Yeah, they're running. They realize that the, the Swiss are coming. Look how many Grenadiers died. Jeez. This is a, I guess it's just a big unit. They've just got numbers. I'd rather have someone else. Look at all like, the dead here as well. This is all like French. Oh, this is nasty. It's been a nasty fight, I will admit. It's been a brutal one with Borodino today. We've done quite a few Borodino battles on the channel. And uh, this one's certainly been a brutal one. But like that. It's been... I mean, the Russians held their positions for a long, long time. I wonder whether they should have fallen back to, like, Gorky and stuff like that, if they had the chance. Maybe an easier, like, you can see a Gorky, this vi a village here, and then Tartanovo. Could have defended, like, this small area, if they needed to, but they, look, at, look what it's setting into. It's the ring of death around Borodino. Oh, and we just pulled some switches to farm out. Yeah, you can see, like, Victor's core as well is, like, still arriving. Still got so much infantry that they could bring to bear. If they wanted to, but um, in fairness, Victor's core is probably the weakest. Like an infantry, he's got like the most variety of infantry. He's got like the poles, which I mean, I like the poles. I think they do quite well. Um, he's got a lot of Germans. I'd say like the strongest core by far and away was the Vus. The Vus had like just entirely French infantry. Are you gonna fire Russia? Are just gonna stand here and die? Very well. Just stand here and die. Yeah, the defense of this side is getting underway. I mean, this is not a good sign that you can just walk through this river. I was hoping that you maybe happen to make these river crossings. It would be the way to get across, but it would seem not. They've got artillery firing here. It's not really just shooting his own infantry for a team. They're not quite at order 227. Not one step back yet. There you go. Firing onto these uh, line infantry. Yeah, Davu's core seems like pretty intact, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> most of this infantry is all of his. I mean, there's quite a lot of Udenol's here, to be fair. But Udenol's been, like, been battling around this, um... Well, he's been fighting with Ney, and he's also been fighting over this redoubt for a long time. Davu just kind of, like... I don't know, he had, like, he kind of, like, helped take this village. Didn't seem to lose a lot, though. Like, there's a lot of Russians that just, like, got outgunned. I guess he's got, like, I guess Davu's just got, like, the most elite French units, I don't know. He's got those snazzy looking, uh, Grenadiers the line, put it like that. The snazzy looking as uh, hell. Big old line of French forming up here. It's like a firing squad. Firing at the Russians across the river. No firing. I was gonna say, stop firing back, Russia. Don't go out without a fight. Not now. Yeah, these guys are just getting gunned down. Can they not return fire? Sure, they can.
But yeah, like this unit here, for instance, is like firing on the uh, French here. I'm just getting shot in the flank by uh, like the Vu's like new reinforcements. Got the Portuguese here. I haven't really showed them off. Yeah, you know, I've got these Portuguese uh, Legion. Even though by this point in like history, Portugal's like very much under Allied control. Like by the time Borodinos are coming around, Portugal's uh, yeah, well, held by the uh, British and the Portuguese. So I'm not quite sure how you have this unit. I guess maybe it's just maybe it's not made up of uh, Portuguese. It's just made up of, like a unit that was raised in Portugal. I don't know. That would necessarily that would probably mean that it is they're made up of Portuguese who's raised in Portugal. I don't know. Maybe there were Portuguese that fought for the French elsewhere. Loyalists, well, not loyalists, revolutionaries. Even though this is definitely past the days of the revolution. See, all the crashes still out here. Look at this, the French coming in there with their guns. No, leave the big siege guns alone. That's what they've been called. The big rail guns is what I'm going to call them, actually. Yeah, those, they're gone. That's a shame. Just don't protect your guns, Russia. Like, one of the best things you'd left. God damn it, Russia. What are you doing? Protect your guns. There's one unit of, like, Chevaliers is going to get way into, like, the enemy lines. It's just going to... Might route, yep, route a couple more Russians. This one could form square as well. And this one could, actually. What are you doing, Russia? I know you like to fight, but form square is a bit more effective. You, s you survive longer. Krasi is going around the flank here. Are they kind of trying to go for Davu? Possibly. Not a bad idea. Take him out. The core's got a lot weaker. Only the general to die so far has been Tomasov. All the other um, generals have either, I presume, got back here. Yeah, we've got Tuchov here. We've got uh, Bagration here. I don't know where um, Kutarov is. Probably run away. But uh, you can see the French storming here now. They've got their uh, grenadiers, the line going in. What are they facing? Sappers. Not a bad matchup. Come on, Russia. The Saps and Fire are fighting now. There we go. You've got to fight for the Tsar. R Winds is not quite here yet. Where are we going? More Russians look like they're going to be sent in. Well, there's line for getting ready. Looks like the uh, French got more of themselves being sent up. Yeah, who's got more light of this grand the line ready? Yep, in go the Russians. Setting in their stuff there. That might be enough. I don't know if they're trying to hold it or if they're trying to take it. I think they're trying to hold it. Oh my god, yeah, look at them just getting gunned down and just trying to like, get inside the building. That is brutal. Brutal. Yeah, I think the uh, old sap is broke. Yep, there you go. The building being taken by the French. There you go. They've taken the building and now, I mean... Where do the Russians go now? They've lost Borodino. It didn't take much to take it in fairness. I mean, well, I say that. It's the entire French army bar Victor. Uh, come here and taken it. I mean, the Russians have got very little left. Migration here just looking around. He's like, my beautiful army. It's gone. It's all gone. Tuchov here looks like he's. Tuchov looks like he's like ready to go in and maybe get himself uh, killed. I don't know. He's very close to the front line. I mean, the, the, the front line is just about everywhere, there's, everywhere at this point. So, anywhere you are, you're pretty close. I can get cavalry. Yeah, where is this? Oh! I did not realize. Okay, so the French have. Are the Russians trying to go for Victor's Corps that's like on the road? I think they are, and they're being chased down by all the Hussars. I thought I could hear Cav. Russia's just not interested in the Cav here. They'd rather just try and take out all of these units here, which, I mean, that'd be hilarious if they did, but most of them can form square, I think. Actually, I say that. I hold it over about three there that can't. Most of them are the Poles. Yeah, most of these Polish infantry cannot form square. You know what, actually? A lot of the uh, Victor's Corps cannot form square. That's a shame that this Russian army over on this far side did not have any, like, cav. Because, yeah, most of this army here cannot form square. And there you go. The Russian crash is gone. Wasn't anything interesting. They just tried to run, like, outrun the uh, Hussars and Dragoons. It just wasn't going to happen. 
I think the crash probably should have tried to like fight it out with the uh, two units of cavalry. They probably would have won that fight. And they would have had total cavalry domination, even though they're getting dominated on the infantry line, uh, like front, completely. Still got these um, like six pounders. I don't know where they, the guns are, but you could. I know that you can get artillery crew. You can put them on the wrong artillery, so you could actually mount these uh, these uh, big rail gun things up again, but. I mean, what's the point? The French are about to take the ground that they're on. The Russians are in full retreat on this side. I mean, they've been broken entirely, actually. There's a... Oh, the Portuguese just got sent into combat. I didn't even realize. No wonder. No one wants to mess with the Portuguese. You can see now the Russians going in column. This would be like the Russians, uh, like, in the evening, when, like, the French are finally broken through. Um, this is the Russians just getting out, like, as, uh, as night falls. And the French don't persist, but uh, I can tell you the French will persist because there's no nightfall. Look at this. They're just desperately trying to cut off the fr Russians. I don't know where they're going, they're going, though. There's a red line not far from here. Yeah. There's no building to really defend around. I guess you could defend around this little hamlet, but the French nearly at that. I'd honestly just go for like one massive charge and just like see what you can take out with the Russians. Bag Is that Bagrogation rowing? No, he's still. No, he's happy. I think it's the other one. I don't know. Who knows? But there you go. Oh, here we go. Here's a general. With two chauvets going in. Going in for the kill on a unit that can't form square. What a smart man. Actually, again, quite a few of these can't form square. Oh, Vedenberg, yeah, they're just like, infantry just going to form square. Yeah, they broke him. No surprise. There's a we brave carry charge. There you go, another general dead. Break. That'll be a two shot off there. And now, yeah, I mean, these. What are they doing? They're just running for the hills. It's a sad sight because this Russian defense over here at Borodino did really well. They beat Ney. I would say they quite happily would have beaten Ney. It's just that then, like, the rest of the corps got involved. Udinov came along. He didn't really have enough to, like, clinch the victory, but then as soon as Davu arrived, it was, like, a huge, healthy corps. Did a nice job. I saw Davu's like core at the beginning Glorious of the battle, is soon to be yours. and like it was a huge amount of infantry. Um, most of it, which is kept alive, I think, but he just seemed to have like endless streams of uh, infantry. Did a, like poor Russia. And these grenadiers going. These useless grenadiers. I don't really know what they, what their purpose is. There you go. Migration's realize he's got nowhere to go. And most of this Russian infantry has now been picked up by Cav. Got those Hussars and those are Dragoons in here now. They all got a lot of kills just from like getting all these like kills at the end of the battle. Yep. I don't know how much this infantry can form square, like one unit. It's not good. That seems like another thing that the French like just happily charge their cavalry in just about anywhere and the Russians can't form square but um, the Russians are kind of like the opposite like they have to kind of like be very precise when they want to throw their cab in or they have to make sure that the player is busy elsewhere before they can do that because uh, most of the French can form square apart from like I think most of Victor's Corps couldn't by the looks of it but like most of Davout's could most of Ney's could most of um, Udinol's well, they could as well so I would say that the French had much more successful carry charges coming from that, while the like, Russians just did, did not put it like that. Oh, the Portuguese have been sent back in. I like this. These guys are just like the runs of the army. They send them through the heavy lifting. Fight. You go fight the Russians in combat. That'll end well. Fair, actually. They're doing quite well. Holding the line, anyway. Put it like that there. Holding the line. Running at the sides of the Portuguese. There you go. I think that's the battle now. Bagregation's just got to like, just got to break. Get him off the field. Oh, don't run, please. There we go. I mean, he's not going to outrun this dragoon, I don't think. Thank God the French have cab left. Yeah, he's been stopped. Stopped in his tracks. And there you go. That's going to be the battle, I think. As uh, you'll see, uh, migration like broken here. 
I'd, um, I'd imagine. Maybe not. Oh, come on, please. I'm gonna fast forward. Please break. I don't want to have to watch as you run around the battlefield with him. Oh, he's got out as well. God damn it. God damn it, France. Just go in and kill something, please. I don't want to spend however long left just watching this. I think you... <laughs> there you go. He's getting gunned down by infantry. Good. You deserve that. Just accept your death. You're dead. There you go, Sonny. I don't know what the... Yeah, there we go. The Russians... I was going to say, I don't know what the Russians have left. I thought that was the last unit. But there you go. So, uh, this was a French victory, as it was in history. Um, yeah, look at that. Look at this. is uh, Johnny Le Buffoon was playing... Uh, was playing um, Davu. He has a huge army. It's bigger than anything that the Russians have available. So, the French outnumbered the Russians here. Um, which I don't feel like should be the case. But there you go. I mean, he actually, he lost a fair amount of his army, but still had a lot left. Killed way over 2,000 men. Um, with Defuse Call, we have Ho Chi Minh here playing as uh, Udno. We have Paranoid playing as Victor. And we have uh, Eric Hartman playing as Ney over here as the uh, final uh, French player. We have Flux. Uh, I don't know exactly who these guys were playing. Um, but yeah, we have Flux here playing as one of the Russians. We have Opium Fields playing as another. Bong Rip every replay. Uh, and then we have uh, King of Gondor playing as the final one. I mean, these two are playing as like Tomasov and Tuchov, one of them, but who knows which one. I think Flux is playing as Bagregation, I think. And I'm going to say that uh, this was uh, maybe like uh, Opium Fields was playing as Dutrov. I don't know. Maybe the other way around. Um, but yeah, we'll have a quick look at the kills anyway. We've got some Hussars here for uh, Davu's Corking. Uh, 213 kills. Some good kills there. Grenadier's line 145. Uh, Lion 345, Chasseurs 143. They got some good kills. Um, to be fair, his Cav. And yeah, there you go. There are the rest of the kills. A lot of kill units getting over 100. But there you go. Hope you guys anyway enjoyed this one. It certainly was a fun one to see as the French win at Borodino again. I'd like to see a Russian defense and a Russian victory at Borodino one day. If someone has a replay for it, feel free to send it my way. I'd love to see... Uh, the Russians actually get some revenge on the French. But anyway, if you enjoyed, like I said, don't forget to leave, leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment to show your support. Don't forget that notification bell as well if you want to see more NTW3 action. And until next time, Legionnaires, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.